What is up, takers? It's your boy Tyler. This is Ty's Take today, and joining t joining me today is music artist Vante. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely. So uh, let's go ahead and just dive straight in. Um, I know we got a lot to talk about, including your new your newest single, as well as some upcoming projects uh, that are going to be uh, rolling out this summer. Um, so let's just start off by introducing you to the takers and tell us a little bit more about your path and to becoming a music artist. Yes, sir. Well, thank you again, uh, Tyler. It's always nice to see you. Uh, you have always have a warm spirit. Um, and I love people who are warm spirited um, and always positive. So I love that about you. So I have to first and foremost say that to you. Um, for your takers, my name is Vontae. I'm a singer. I rap, um, act a little bit. Um, I do a little bit of everything. I'm a very creative person. So, you know, I try to do as much creative things as I possibly can. Um, you know, I, I started singing at a very young age, like everybody's story. You know what I'm saying? Only thing about my story I, is I didn't grow up singing in the church. Um, and so now as an independent artist, a more mature and seasoned independent artist, um, you know, I'm still grinding and, and doing my thing on the day to day. <laughs> Absolutely. So growing up in Maryland, correct. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood experiences? And um, I know you're a, a very strong and firm believer in faith so how is how have your um how are those life experiences as well as uh religion and your beliefs influenced your abilities as an artist ah uh, <laughs> so so i grew up in i grew up um in different facets of the church um so i grew up in foster care um i still had a relationship with my mom still to this day uh which is a blessing um, my foster mom was actually the bus driver for all of my aunts and uncles. So it kind of worked out a little bit. Um, so she knew my family. We were still able to stay in contact. Um, and religion has been a very strong thing for me. I think I'm a very like faith driven person, very spiritual. Um, I believe in a higher power, a higher source, because there has to be something greater than us just all around us and existing somewhere. Um so I grew up in, in um, like Baptist, Baptist churches. Um, also, I went to Catholic churches as well. So I have a little bit of both of those things going on. Religion definitely plays a big part um, or spir spirituality uh, uh, is, plays a big part in my life because I have a lot of faith in, um, you know, things that's outside of me and outside of my control. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and dive in and share with the takers a little bit more about uh, your creative writing process, what, is it, um, what sets you apart from the other music artists that are currently out there? Um, even talking a little bit about uh, which songs you choose to cover uh, when it comes to like your cover versions on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I love old school music. I love throwback music, uh, 80s, even 70s and 60s and 50s music, that old school Motown um like Smokey Robinson, I love like Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston is definitely one of my biggest inspirations. And behind me, you can see up here, back here are some of my inspirations. So right here, wait, right here, I have Missy Elliott, big inspiration for me, um, rapping, I love her. Up here, we have Rick James, the king. Do you love me, Mary Jane? You know, and then over here, we have Bobby Brown, which, like, I love Bobby Brown. Um, he's definitely one of my inspirations as well. So those three people, plus the ones I mentioned, Beyonce, Michael Jackson, Usher, um, those artists I love. And they play a big part in me selecting the, the covers that I do because their music is amazing. And, um, you know, I just feel inspired. When I feel inspired from something, I just go ahead and, and, and record the cover. So. Absolutely. So as you said before, you've been doing this for quite some time. You're not you're not new to the game. Um, even generating the attention of some of some of some of the biggest people out there, Candy Burris, mm -hmm. uh, Rock Nation executives, comedian Lunell. What is what does it feel like or what is that what does that mean to you getting noticed by all these these prominent figures in the industry? Uh it's an amazing feeling, actually. Um I grew up watching these people seeing them, you know, rise to fame and, and doing the things that I want to do and doing the things that, you know, every every independent artist or every creative wants to do. We want to live out our dreams. We want to be um, 
on TV and we want to be able to share our wealth and, and to help our communities and we want to be able to give back to people. And these are the people that, you know, I look up to. Beyonce, she has a Be Good Foundation. Candy Burris, she gives back to independent artists. She does a lot for women. Um, so these people, Lunell, she's very like female empowerment driven. Um, and I love these people. So these people definitely play a big, big part in my life. And it just feels amazing to be recognized by not just them, but, you know, my peers as well, like other independent artists and, you know, people like yourself as well. So I'm very thankful. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And as you guys all know, and for those of you that may be new to the show, um, you know, we focus on a lot of a lot of different topics from entertainment, lifestyle, um, but really a, a main part of our platform actually is, you know, talking about those conversations, mental health, um, affordable housing, this, th those different topics and um, things that impact our communities that, you know, play a key role in survival. But a lot of times those conversations are swept under the rug and people don't want to talk about those things. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about your song, Contagious. Um, I want to I want to know and introduce and share that story and what that was like and what really inspired you and fueled you to create that song. Uh, like during the pandemic, um, around that time, there was a lot of like injustice, a lot of craziness going on in the world um, before, after, during. Like it's just, it was just so much going on and so many people were affected by um, the injustices that were just going on, going on around the world. Like. A lot of black people are getting killed. Just a lot of innocent people in general getting killed. But specifically, um, I guess in this case, the Black Lives Matter movement um, started. And so I wanted to express myself in that moment. There wasn't a lot of places that we could go um, as artists because everything was shut down. So I felt compelled to write music that spoke, you know, what I was feeling. Um, and Contagious, just one day I came across this beat online and this, the just the melody and I was like why is this melody stuck in my head but racist was in the melody I was like and then it was like racist and I, and I just added lyrics to it and then that's how it came about and um also during that time like Trump was making his way up into you know on online and and on TV just going crazy saying crazy stuff um and I just felt like I had to put him in there. I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to bully him a little bit. So I talked about him and just the whole racist, you know, KKK stuff and, and, and just be straightforward with it. And I feel like a lot of people, it really resonated with them. And so probably still to this day, Contagious is one of my top stream songs, like out of all of my music. Absolutely. And I want to give your uh, give give those kudos and accolades to you as well for, you know, bringing these uh, topics into conversation and featuring it in your music and sharing it on your platform is is continuing to keep those conversations going. Those conversations that are so vital that, like I said, are, are oftentimes overlooked and it's time for a change. And I think, you know, one man can change the world. So that being said, um, I definitely I uh, want to give you your respects as well. And before we talk about um, your newest single that was just recently released, I know we also have the trailer uh, the, or the teaser that we're going to share with you guys as well. What has been some of the most challenging things that you have overcome as an artist thus far? Um, I think getting in my own way has been probably the biggest thing that I've been going through these last couple of years. Um, imposter syndrome i just discovered what the hell that was <laughs> so imposter syndrome basically where you don't feel like you are who you are and then when you do become um that version of yourself that you've always wanted to be you still feel like i'm not good enough you still feel like oh there's more that i could do so i've been feeling a lot like that um just putting myself in a box maybe not pushing myself as hard not believing in myself and even though you can be so phenomenal, so, you know, talented, you still can have those days where you don't feel like yourself. So I sometimes I'm in my way um, when it comes to doing music, recording, um, getting out and doing more lives or getting out and performing and doing things. Just imposter syndrome is, is one of those things. But thankfully, um, I'm aware. So I, at least I know what I have to work on. Absolutely. I think sometimes, you know, we we strive for so much greatness that sometimes we ourselves are our own enemies in a sense. Mm -hmm. 
I've been reading a lot about um, just, you know, finding that work and work-life balance. And I know like the grind is serious, working multiple jobs and just trying to find mm-hmm. that, that, you know, even keel, if you will. Um, what advice uh-huh. would you give to some artists um, out there that may be struggling or just a little bit of inspiration that you would give them if um, they're new to the game in the industry? I would say, do not try to skip steps. Don't do it. (laughs) Every bit of pain, every bit of suffering, every bit of loss, every bit of, I didn't get this, every bit of confusion, every bit of chaos, everything that's going on in your life is a part of what builds you and what's going to make you even greater. So don't try to skip steps. Don't try to, you know, pay for followers. Don't, you know, try to fit in with everybody. Like, Take in your journey and understand that your purpose is different from someone else's. I think a lot of times, especially with social media, we don't see the things that other people are going through. We don't see the fact that they're struggling. We see people with nice clothes and and they seem like they have a nice background and a nice house and all these different things. But we don't know what they had to go through to get those things. We don't know what they have to continue doing to even keep up with their appearance with all the things that we think that they have. So I think you have to center yourself. Um, you have to humble yourself and, and get in the mud and get in and, and get, you know, be okay with getting dirty. Um, and that's just saying, go through the process. Like if you have to struggle, if you have to work, you know, six days a week, if you have to, you know, take off of work, if you have to do what you have to do to make it happen, then you have to do it. And also not being afraid to learn. Um, I think so many people see, people up here and they're like, oh, I got to get to Beyonce status. I got to get to Michael Jackson and Drake and Kendrick and all these people's different statuses. It's like, work your way up. Because a lot of times you think that you want to be where Beyonce is. Do you know what Beyonce has to go through to be Beyonce? She loses time with her family. She loses her, I'm sure her mental is, is a little bit, you know, all over the place. Sometimes she has people judging her. She has people not liking her music and She's wanting to give her soul, and that's what we all want to do. So you have to just lock in with who you are, understand who you are as a person, and that way you can give yourself authentically without trying to be like anybody else. Absolutely. That's what we do on here on the platform, inviting guests with creative mindsets and dropping <laughs> gems. That being said, um, I do want to shout out real quick to producer Jazz, who is in the building uh, behind the scenes. Uh, making sure that everything and making sure that we look good. So I do want to shout out to her really quickly. Y'all can catch her on the radio in Chicago, as well as her own podcast, The Midday Live Show. Um, That being said, why don't we go ahead and roll the teaser to your latest single? What do you want? What do you seek? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you see? Too many thoughts running through my head And I ain't never been a type to ever be too proud to beg So I just want a little peace, want a little peace of my heart All right, so let's dive in. I want to know I want to know the background. Um, you talk a lot about about self discovery and posing the question, uh, such as "What are you looking for?" and "What do you desire?" So, what is what are you currently in search of on your journey as an artist um, of growth? And you know, what where has that quest taken you in life thus far? Ah, uh, first of all, I I just kind of want to toot my own horn a little bit, only because. This song is like, it means so much to me. Like, I can't even really explain like the depths of how I feel about this song. Um, even when I listen to it, it takes me back to, it helps ground me, helps to center me. Um, this song means a lot to me. Like I'm in the song, you know, I talk about being on a search for something and the search at the end, you gotta, 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 you gotta find. Then what I say, peace. That's what I'm. That's what I'm in search for. And I think that there's peace in a lot of different things. There's peace in your family. There's peace in knowing who you are. There is peace in building your talent and being comfortable in your skin. 
Um, there is peace in silence, too. I think sometimes we get distracted by social media. We get distracted by the glitz, the glamour, um, money, working. We get distracted by so many different things. And I think if we learn to just be still, be silent, a lot of times the things that we're searching for is right in front of us. It's like, it's right here, but you're so busy trying to be like either everybody else or you're trying to create this life for yourself that may be, not that it's not attain uh, attainable, but it's just something that you can't have right now. Lock in with right now and understand that peace is, is right here, right now. Being aware, being in the moment, being in the present, um, not dwelling on the past, your past mistakes, not so focused on the future, what I need to do tomorrow, what I need to, like some days, just rest, just chill. And that's why in the song I say, at the end, you got to find peace because that's really what I'm looking for. Um, and another piece of that, you know, in the song, I say, I'm on a journey. I want to serve or something more than just reality. On that part and on the other part of it, it's like I'm on a search for a reality and I'm on a search for a fantasy. Both of those things can, you know, go hand in hand. But at the same time, it's like once I have reality, it's like, oh, I want the, the fantasy. Once I have the fantasy, oh, now I want the reality. So it's like a never ending battle. I want to have peace. I want to I want to be grounded. I want to, you know, have my everyday life like how I have it now. But I also want the glitz, the glamour. I want the money. I want the attention. I want to be on stage. But I know that when I get up there, it's going to be hell. And so then I'm going to want to come back to this place of reality. You know what I'm saying? I, I see the social media world and I see celebrities in their life as like a fantasy because a lot of it is not real. A lot of people perceive to be rich. They perceive to be, you know, all these different things. But at the end of the day, like I said, you got to find peace. Absolutely. Sometimes, like you said, it's definitely a facade or an illusion at times where we're only seeing a glimpse when it comes to like social media, what we're seeing on, on, on these social media platforms. Uh, so I know the song just dropped uh, not too long ago. What has been the reaction thus far? And do you have any upcoming releases to come uh, later this summer? Yes. So the song just dropped. I've been getting a lot of good feedback. Um, the first single that I dropped from the album was Yearning. That was a, like a punk, uh, pop, uh, funk type of type of record. The second one was Superficial. That was like a throwback to <laughs> Bobby Brown, <laughs> New Jack Swing. Um, and this one, very more, uh, much more um, personal to me. And the next release will be something special as well. I do plan on releasing another one. Um, hopefully, maybe, possibly, <laughs> next month. It depends. I'm right now going through the track listing of my album, Heartbreaker. Um, and so I keep going back and forth like, oh, I want to add a song or I want to, you know, cut a song. Uh, one of my favorite albums is Michael Jackson's Thriller um, in Off the Wall. His album was, I think, what, nine tracks or eight tracks? Um, very kind of short, sweet to the point. He had hits on there, classics. That's what I want to have. I don't want to have just fillers on here just because I want to have 15, you know, tracks or 12 tracks. If I do nine tracks, I'm good with that. If I do eight, you know, I'm good with that. But I want to make it a full body of work. Um and yeah, so I have more music coming, definitely. Um, I may even drop some songs that may not be on the album, but I just want to continue to grow as an artist, put out more music, because that's what I think people really want from me. They love the covers, they love the remixes, they love all of that stuff, but they really want to see, like, who are you as an artist? Like, what do you have to offer? Absolutely. And speaking of growth, you just perfectly segued us into my next question. Your album, Note to Self, I want to talk a little bit about that. I know it came out back in 2021, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, want to, I want to dive in a little bit. Um, how have you grown as an artist since that release? And of course, I do have to tell y'all that if you haven't, be sure to check out Note to Self and listen to Love Games uh, because your boy is featured on the track. So okay, come on. is a banger uh, track by track. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I had to throw it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it, got it. Yeah, you in there. So um, is there any information or any other gems you'd like to drop to the viewers as well as where they can find you on social media? 
how to stay connected and do you have any blogs or more uh written content uh that you're going to be pushing out on your website yes yeah, so hopefully i will be updating uh, my website here and there like as i'm going along i'm learning how to do everything because as an independent artist you got to do everything you know you got to wear different hats um so i have been working on my website every day i've been you know working on trying to produce i just bought a brand new guitar so i'm learning how to do that um and i have been putting out a lot of vlogs i started with a blog and uh, people started reading um but now i'm putting out some vlogs <laughs> uh, so i have a lot of content that i'll be pushing out um, and I just want to continue to allow my fans to see me in a different light versus just all music all the time. You know, I want to get personal with them. Um, and yeah, and just continue to, to, to grow. That's my main thing for this year. Um, I think from note to self to heartbreaker. Now, the things that I've learned from then to now is to be more comfortable with myself. Um, I created note to self because I was in an uncomfortable state of mind i wasn't that secure with who i was as an artist you know it may come off like oh he's cocky in one of the songs he's talking all his stuff yeah like sometimes you have to say it's like an affirmation i gotta say these things because you know it's to help build me up i gotta say the things that maybe i don't believe in right now just so that one day i can live up to it you know it's like patting yourself on the back it's like giving yourself that confidence boost so from that to this album i've learned a lot um, as far as being an artist, putting out content, creating, um, being independent. And so now I'm comfortable with my voice. I'm comfortable with singing. I'm comfortable with my genre of music, my tone, all of that. And so I'm able to create the album that I've always wanted to create. Note to self was supposed to be what Heartbreaker is now. But I wasn't able to do it at that time because I wasn't secure with myself. <laughs> Absolutely. So make sure you guys are, are, um, be sure to stream the newest single, Euphoria, which is available on Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Um, I just want to say thank you again so much for joining us and introducing your talents and your story to all the takers. And we'll be sure to post all your social media links uh, within the description and the captions of these videos. Uh, once again, Vate, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll talk thank to you, you soon. Peace, y'all. Peace.